And again, I am the chief dealer here at Tier Markets. And um, what we really wanted to do today was to um, revisit a webinar which I did uh, probably about nine months ago. Um, you know, the world was a very different place nine months ago. Um, Tier Markets was uh, in its infancy and um, words such as coronavirus and uh, COVID-19 um, were not really part of, uh, of anybody's language. Um, with the world having changed, it's fair to say, uh, not only uh, has the world changed, but markets have changed as well. Uh, so what I really wanted to do today um, was, as I said, go through uh, this uh, webinar again, uh, but apply it to really you know, the, the new markets that uh, we have in front of us, you know, new levels of volatility, um, different correlations, uh, and obviously people's circumstances may well have changed uh, significantly um, over time as well. All of these things you do need to take into account when trading. So, um, you know, first of all, no matter where you are in the world, I hope you uh, and your families are safe uh, whilst, you, uh, whilst you watch this and hopefully... Uh, are insulated from uh, some of the terrible things that are happening. Um, my own family has been directly affected, so uh, I understand how it feels, and uh, I sympathise to anybody that's, uh, that has been likewise affected. So um, the first thing, as you can see on the agenda here, is uh, risk. How much are you comfortable risking when trading? Um, this, to me, is always the first question that needs to be asked. Uh, you know, a lot of people like to dive in and... and uh, you know, what do I need to do to trade? Do I need to look at this chart or, you know, these economic numbers? Or, you know, people just get so excited about going into trade. But the very first thing you've got to ask yourself is how much am I comfortable risking when trading? And the answer to that question is going to vary from one person to another. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer. It's, it's a personal preference. Um, you know, and I encourage people to understand that, you know, you need to have capital available to you that you are willing to risk and that if you were to lose it, it wouldn't fundamentally change your economic circumstances. But obviously, nine months ago, as I said, the world was a different place. Um, now, you know, a lot of people are stuck at home. Um, many people have lost their jobs and uh, are maybe are not getting any economic assistance from their respective um governments, etc. So it's important, you know, you wash your home, you want to trade because you've got this time all of a sudden that you didn't have before. But if your economic circumstances have changed, you know, think very carefully about how much you're willing to risk before you start trading. Um, it is it is an important thing to be able to do. You know, you have to adjust with the times and be cognizant of, uh, of your current economic situation. So please, um, you know, please do keep that in mind. Um, when you are trading. Um, the second point here is plan your trade and trade your plan. That's, uh, you know, something I've, I've always, um, I've always fundamentally uh, insisted on traders um, doing, you know, don't trade for the sake of trading. You've got to place a trade, have a reason for placing that trade. Now, different traders are going to have different reasons for placing that trade. You know, it could be a fundamental reason you're looking at, uh, economic data releases, I would suggest in the current market environment, economic data releases are a little bit hit and miss. Um, you know, we had non-farm payroll data the Friday just gone here in the US. And, you know, it showed a loss of 700,000 non-farm payroll jobs and the unemployment rate jumping up to 4.4% uh, from 3.5%. Um, realistically, myself and just about any other trader out there knows that that's not the full picture. Even though it's a bad number, we know the real numbers are far, far greater than that. So I think when we start looking at, at uh, economic data at the moment, you've got to be a little careful um, how you interpret it. Uh, you know, I'm not sure it really has an enormous amount of relevance. Um, you know, I would I would focus maybe a little bit more on what the respective governments and, and central banks are doing in terms of uh, putting stimulus into the economy, um, you know, looking at, at data on employment or manufacturing or 
uh, inflation or whatever it might be. I'm, I'm not sure that those snapshots have a great deal of relevance right now. You know, they might have done nine months ago. They might have done one month ago, but I'm not sure they do right now. So just be a little bit careful of that. Technically, you know, we're looking at charts. Again, volatility has increased so much over the past um, over the past month or so. You need to be a little bit careful when you're looking at charts because um, if you are somebody that's, that likes to look at very short-term charts or look at some short-term indicators, you know, again, I, I would suggest just being a little bit mindful of getting too married to some of these things um, because looking at charts that, you know, short-term charts that may have worked, um, you know, as I said, a month or a couple of months ago, uh, with volatility having suddenly increased so dra dramatically, um, if you try trading within too tight a range, there's uh, a, a real possibility that you'll get chopped up in the intraday volatility. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you go look at a chart, even when you look at a chart where you've got some sort of fundamental trend there on a, on a chart, um, things very rarely go in a, a straight line. They tend to sort of go in a in one direction, but you get you get a, a zigzag effect, if you like, with the, the ups and downs during the, the minute, the hour, the day, or whatever. Those zigzags have now been uh, become far more profound. So, you know, you need to be very mindful when you're putting a trade on and looking at charts um, that that volatility is increased. And it may be uh, better to look at sort of longer term charts to try and pick out some uh, some more important levels uh, than the, the short term stuff. So just, you know, keep that in mind as well. Um, entry and exit points, the use of stop losses are probably more important than ever. You know, you you want to get into a trader and, you know, I, the current market being the way it is, um, you know, I write a daily commentary and I've written a commentary for years. A part of, you know, there's two parts of the commentary. One is to, to explain what happened and the second part is to explain why it happened. And over the last month, it can be very difficult to explain some of the volatility and some of the sharp moves we have. It just it just is. And why is that? Is because investors, traders, corporates, funds, hedge funds, money, whatever it might be, are not necessarily trading because they want to trade, but they're trading because they have to trade. They have obligations that they have to meet. They have to sell, you know, equities. They have to sell gold. They have to buy, um, you know, whatever it might be. It's these are things they have to do. In normal foreign exchange markets, ninety percent of the flow that goes through on any given day is speculative. Ten percent is real. Okay, ten percent is real. By that I mean it is actually a, a flow which is uh, associated with, you know, maybe you know a corporate name has to uh, has to hedge uh, some some offshore currency flows, or they're making an acquisition or something like that, or You've got funds, real money funds that are investing in offshore securities, so they have to buy the local currency in order to go and buy those securities, or maybe they're liquidating offshore securities and they have to sell it. Or you've got life insurers, um, you know, liquidating uh, liquidating assets in order to uh, to pay out on claims. There's, there's a whole bunch of things, but they're what I would call real flows. It's not the likes of you or me or somebody in the hedge fund sitting there going, hmm, I like the idea of Donnie in going lower, let's sell here, put a... 100 point stop loss on it and, you know, try and pick up two, 300 points to the downside, which is purely speculative. The world has changed a little bit. So it, it's very, very important that when you are trading at the moment, you do pick your entry points and exit points um, and stick to them. I still see way too many people not using stop losses. I spent 25 years working on the institutional side of the foreign exchange business, mainly for banks. And, you know, there were several rules that banks had, but you just had to adhere to. And if you didn't, um, you were going to get in a lot of trouble. And one of them as a trader was you always, always, always had to stop have a stop loss in place on a position. OK, because you would have you would have in, uh, limits imposed on you by the bank that you could only run position sizes of a certain amount or you could only run positions, you could only run risk um, up to a certain maximum loss. 
<coughs> and it didn't matter where you worked, you always had those those um, limits placed upon you. Uh, for some reason, retail traders seem to think that it's good enough for people working on bank desks, but they would never do it with their own money. Well, you know, they don't put stop losses on their own money. They don't pay attention to the entry and exit points. So think about where you want to get in. If markets are volatile, sometimes you have to react very quickly to get in. For me right now, the best way to trade is, is short-term momentum. You see something move and you see the momentum going and to try and jump on it. Um, you may not necessarily dig deep to find out you know, why things are certainly moving in a certain direction very quickly, but you see it moving, so you try and jump on it. But it's also important when you get into that position to understand, okay, I've got a position now and I'm still going to use and uh, I'm still going to use stop losses and take profit levels to get in and out of the trade. I'm still going to be, you know, if I sell, and I'm just picking a level arbitrarily here, but if I sell euro at 108.50, I'm going to think to myself, you know, if this goes back above 108.80, I'm out. I'm going to put a stop loss on it. And if it goes back down towards 108, the figure I'm going to buy them back. Now, it's very important to be able to still have those parameters in your mind, especially in the most volatile markets. Stop losses are important because when you have markets as they are at the moment they are very susceptible to things changing direction changing very quickly they're very very susceptible to news items coming out the headlines coming out we've got a plethora of world leaders speaking all the time around you know developments of the coronavirus the number of infections deaths everything else uh, none of which makes particularly pleasant reading um, and then you have people talking about the economics of it all, opening up the economies of various countries, stimulus plans, monetary plans, fiscal plans, you know, what the central banks are doing. There's headlines coming out all the time, and they can they can change the direction of a particular currency pair. They can change, um, you know, the direction of the equity markets very, very quickly, far quicker than you're going to be able to react. So you need to have that stop loss in place to make sure you have some sort of risk mitigation there, because otherwise you're going to be staring at the screen going, hold on a minute, why, sudden, why something suddenly moved 100 points the wrong way, and, and that's when you run the risk of, of taking an excessive loss. So please, please, please do put stop losses in place. Whilst the execution is guaranteed, the fill may not be, but at least you're guaranteed to get stopped out of the position, hopefully without... Uh, um, w without, you know, too much slippage and, and um, you know, ruining your account. Um, there is one thing I would like to point out at this point is something which I probably didn't bring up in the original webinar is something called gap risk, okay, um, which I'm just bringing up under the, the idea of stop losses. Um, what is gap risk? Gap risk is the risk, the market risk you have when, you have a particular symbol or product closes at a certain time and then reopens. The most obvious one is obviously over a weekend. We close trading on Friday afternoon and we reopen on, on Monday morning or Sunday or wherever it is uh, where, where you happen to be trading. But obviously there's a, there's a gap there and things can happen over the weekend. And we just saw uh, a really um, great example of that um, a couple of weeks ago with the price of oil. OK, there was um, <clears throat> there was some tension between Russia and Saudi Arabia over a weekend and the price of oil dropped 30 uh, percent over a weekend. You know, it's it's something you have to be important because even with a stop loss in place, when the market is the market closes, your stop will get triggered. But it's still going to get triggered a long, long way away from where you originally had it. So please, please, please be very mindful of, of running risk over weekends. Be mindful of risk at the other gap times we have as well. Even, you know, even short gaps. You know, we, we know each day there's a gap in trading in commodities. There's a gap in trading in equity markets. You know, money only be for an hour, but you still have a gap there. And just be mindful of, of that gap. There is a risk. Uh, that risk is, is on you. Um, so please be mindful of that uh, as you trade. It's, um, it's something which, which does catch uh, even the most experienced traders out. So, you know, just be thoughtful of that, especially if you're running risk over a weekend uh, on the current environment. Be, uh, be, be thoughtful. Uh, disciplined trading risk reward, the making of a great trader. 
Um, this still applies today as much as ever. Um, you know, risk reward. If you, you know, again, I see way too many traders uh, willing to risk um, a huge amount of money um, to make a very small amount of money. You got it the wrong way around. You should be reading, you know, if you're going to risk 10 points, you want to be making, at a minimum, you want to be making 10 points or, or aiming to make 10 points, but you should be looking to make 20 or 30 or 40 points. Um, and that is that that is what does make a great trader is the great traders will cut their losses and they run the profits. And if you think about it mathematically, you know, you, you, if you do run your profits or cut your losses, you know, you don't have to be right 50%. You can be correct less than 50% of the time. But if you, you know, if you're only right 40% of the time, but you're making 40 points, and when you're wrong, you're only losing 10 points. Even at 60% of the time, you're still overall going to be head of the game. So please, please, please think very carefully, um, you know, especially in current market conditions, think very carefully about how much you're willing to risk vis-a-vis -vis how much you're willing to make, okay? Because things can move very quickly and they can get away from you. So, you know, be disciplined, all right? The best traders are always disciplined. So if you're going to risk your 10 points or your 20 points, be willing to make at least that, double that, triple that as a profit. Okay? Very, very important because over time that will come back uh, and benefit you immensely. Never trade with emotion, good or bad. If you're having a bad day, walk away, come back tomorrow. Um... You know, ever since I started trading over 30 years ago, you know, I've sat in dealing rooms where I've watched traders get angry and they swear and they break phones and they curse at their uh, their colleagues and, you know, go home, kick the dog, do whatever. Um, it is not a good way to trade. It is a very bad way to trade. Um, I will guarantee you, uh, I don't like to guarantee much in trading, but if you trade with emotion, um, I guarantee it will end badly. And, and obviously at the moment, um, many of us are working from home. Many of us are stuck at home. Uh, our economic circumstances have changed. Our personal circumstances may have changed. It is obviously uh, can be quite stressful being under the same roof as other people, even if you love them to death all day long. Um, you know, it, it does put us. It does put under a certain amount of sh strain, and uh, and tempers can get frayed a little bit. So, um, more importantly than ever. You know, please, please, please do not uh, do not trade with emotion. You know, if you're sitting there and you're angry and and you you know feeling a bit down about things, you know maybe it's not the best time to go and trade. Um, you know, and if you are having a bad day, as I said, walk away, come back tomorrow. Markets are still going to be on tomorrow. Um, yeah, so just take that into consideration. And um, you know, but ultimately never trade impaired. You know, I know uh, we're all stuck at home and uh, I'm sure the uh, global sales of alcohol have gone up. You know, we're sitting at home and they get a bit bored and they crack open the beer, a bottle of wine, you know, whatever it might be. Um, please do not trade impaired. If you wouldn't drive a car impaired, do not trade impaired because it will also end badly for you. So please you know, just be mindful of that, and especially under the conditions we're under at the moment. And then finally, learn from mistakes um, and repeat what works well. You know, as a as a trader, you know, as I said, I've been trading over thirty years, and there's lots of, you know, every day is a is a um, is a day to learn something. And I think you know one of the things which we have seen over the past month or so are uh, some of the correlations that we may have um, experienced in the past uh, suddenly fall apart. And as I said, a lot of that, I think, is to do with the fact that the markets have changed and market participants, a lot of the big market participants, the institutions and corporates are doing things because they have to, not because they want to. So that in, in itself does change the market dynamic, but that's something you have to learn from, okay? Really is. You know, we used to, we're, we're too used to sitting there thinking, well, you know, you've got a bad day, equities are lower, um, you know, how is that going to translate into the FX markets? And, you know, the natural reaction would probably be, oh, well, it's going to be a risk-off trade, um, sell yen crosses, for example. 
um, or sell dollar yen. You know, we had the Friday just gone non farm payroll. We had the Dow Jones closing, I can't remember what it was, I think it was down 1.7% on the day. Uh, dollar yen actually ended up closing higher. <coughs> Correlations break down. You've got to learn from it. You've got to be able to spot that and, and see that um, and learn from things that are changing. You know, we've seen moves in gold over the past uh, over the past month. I think most people thought, well, gold is the big safe haven and uh, it's an easy trade. Buy gold, it's going to go up, right? The world's falling apart. Um, and I wouldn't have disagreed with that. But again, you're seeing, you know, we've seen the gold price come off quite aggressively uh, during the month of March. It has bounced back a bit now. Uh, which had a lot of people scratching their heads. This is the reasons why. And there's many reasons why. Um, but again, you've got to be nimble. You've got to learn from the markets as they're, as they're happening and see things as they're happening. You know, don't just assume that everything is going to kind of correlate as it did before. And then finally, repeat what works well. You know, if you've got a certain style of trading, a way that you like to trade that you feel is working well for yourself, then, um, then stick to it. You know, you don't have to fix what's, uh, what isn't broken. So, you know, think, uh, you know, think about what you, when you put trades on, what works well, why did it work well? well take a look at it, you know, take a look, a real look at it, look at your entry point, your exit point, your motivation for putting, putting a trade on, look at your risk reward, you know, did you really have some good risk reward on that trade? Did you risk a small amount to make a much larger amount? Um, you know, all those things just, you know, repeat, repeat what works well. And with that, um, I wish everybody the very best of luck of trading. Volatility is a trader's friend. Um, none of us really make mar- money when markets aren't moving. So, um, you know, we, we always want markets to move uh, and opportunities are there. And obviously at the moment with increased volatility, um, we have to treat those markets with uh, maybe a little bit more respect and be uh, extra disciplined in what we're doing. But opportunities are always there. So, um, you know, as long as you... Go through uh, some of the things that I've looked at here, um, <clears throat> you know, as I said, in terms of good risk management, risk reward and being disciplined and not uh, and not trading when uh, maybe your head's not quite where it needs to be. Um, there are always opportunities. So I wish everybody the best of luck. And with that, I also wish everybody uh, the, uh, uh, you know, everyone's health and, uh, and safety going forward. Uh, the most important thing for everybody at the moment is to stay safe with friends and family and uh, and get through this. I look forward to uh, speaking with everybody soon. Cheers.